Ever had that nagging feeling that someone in your life might be taking advantage of your good nature? It's a troubling thought, isn't it? Today, we're not just scratching the surface. We're diving into the deep end of relationships. I'm going to walk you through 15 startling signs that could mean you're being used. And trust me, some of these might hit close to home. This video isn't just a discussion, it's a journey towards self-awareness and empowerment. So, if you've ever doubted your place in someone's life, or wondered if your generosity is being exploited, you need to hear this. Stay tuned, because what we're about to explore could change the way you see your relationships forever. And before we jump in, if you find this kind of content helpful or enlightening, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stick with me till the end, without skipping. You won't want to miss a single part of this revealing journey. Let's get started. Number 15. Empty Promises When someone makes a promise but doesn't follow through, it's like they're just putting on an act. Their words might sound convincing, but without action, they mean little. This reminds us of what the poet Rumi said, Words are a pretext. It is the inner bond that draws one person to another, not words. True connections are built on actions, not mere words. Marcus Aurelius also advised, Look beneath the surface. Let not the several quality of a thing, nor its worth escape thee, teaching us to look beyond what is said and see if actions reveal genuine care. Remember, a balanced relationship involves both giving and receiving, not just hollow promises. This situation echoes the wisdom of Hafez. It is not the words that matter, but the presence behind the words. It's a harsh lesson, but it teaches us that not all promises are sincere. By observing this, you learn who might be using you. Pay more attention to what people do than what they say, as actions are truer indicators of someone's intentions. This helps in being cautious about whom to trust and invest your emotions in. Number 14. Hidden Hurt This point is about the harm caused by people who use subtle, negative comments to undermine others, often under the guise of jokes. This behavior echoes Marcus Aurelius's wisdom. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. It's a reminder to not let others' insecurities and negativity dictate your self-worth. Similarly, Rumi's words resonate here. Raise your words, not voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. This teaches us the value of nurturing kindness rather than succumbing to negativity. Recognizing such toxic patterns is vital. It's a call to either address these behaviors directly or step away from such damaging interactions, aligning with Epictetus' advice. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Understanding this dynamic enables you to protect your well-being and maintain your inner peace. Number 13. One-way streets in relationships. In relationships where one person always takes and never gives back, there's a striking imbalance. This scenario brings to mind Seneca's insight. We should give as we would receive, cheerfully, quickly, and without hesitation. In these one-sided relationships, one person may become like a parasite, only focused on their own needs. This echoes Rumi's wisdom. Give your hearts, but not into each other's keeping, for only the hand of life can contain your hearts. It's crucial to recognize when a relationship lacks this mutual exchange and care. Marcus Aurelius said, what is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. This reminds us to assess whether relationships are mutually beneficial or if they leave us feeling undervalued and used. 
Number 12. Ignoring Emotional Needs This point emphasizes the damage caused when a partner consistently neglects or minimizes your emotional needs in a relationship. It's akin to a garden where only one flower is allowed to bloom, with others being overlooked. Such behavior reflects a selfish focus where your feelings and needs are sidelined. Epictetus said, We have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak, highlighting the importance of listening in relationships. This emotional neglect is more than insensitivity. It's a form of control and manipulation, making you feel insignificant and insecure. Recognizing these signs of emotional disregard is key. It helps you seek relationships that offer mutual respect, care, and understanding. Echoing Rumi's words, listen with ears of tolerance, see through the eyes of compassion, speak with the language of love. Number 11. Emotional Manipulation Tactics In the intricate world of emotional manipulation within relationships, we must tread carefully, for it often commences in subtle ways. Initially, the manipulator may don a caring and attentive facade, reminiscent of Marcus Aurelius's observation that the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. However, as time unfolds, this facade morphs into something more sinister, Emotional manipulation is akin to a crafty gardener tending to a plant. A skilled gardener provides just the right amount of water and sunshine, nurturing the plant's growth. However, an emotional manipulator, like a heedless gardener, vacillates between overwhelming affection and complete emotional neglect. This emotional roller coaster is akin to the words of Rumi, Raise your words, not voice. It is rain that grows flowers, not thunder. They use these emotional extremes as tools to render you emotionally unstable and excessively reliant on them for approval and validation. This form of manipulation strikes at the very core of a person's emotional health. The manipulator may belittle your achievements as if to echo Epictetus. What is not good for the beehive cannot be good for the bees. Alternatively, they may amplify your failures, fostering perpetual self-doubt and guilt. In such relationships, the power dynamic is perpetually skewed in the manipulator's favor. They deftly control when to offer affection and when to withdraw, keeping their target in a constant state of uncertainty and imbalance. Yet, as Seneca wisely noted, a gift consists not in what is done or given, but in the intention of the giver or doer. It is essential to differentiate between genuine care and manipulative ploys to safeguard your emotional well-being. Emotional manipulation necessitates careful recognition. It entails being acutely aware of the dynamics in your interactions and discerning how they impact your emotional state. By understanding these patterns, you empower yourself to protect your emotional health, seek relationships built on mutual respect and genuine care, and, as Hafez beautifully expressed, listen with ears of tolerance, see through the eyes of compassion, speak with the language of love. Number 10. The Lone Tree Consider a scenario where you're akin to a solitary tree standing in a vast, barren landscape, deprived of the supportive embrace of a thriving forest. In relationships devoid of genuine concern for your well-being, you often find yourself in this desolator position. Your branches extend outward, yearning for the camaraderie that remains elusive. Your aspirations, endeavors, and challenges are met with indifference or surface-level gestures of support. This disparity between words and actions can be likened to the Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius, who emphasized the importance of integrity in our actions. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Despite hearing supportive words, their deeds, or rather the absence of them, speak louder. 
When the situation calls for genuine assistance, their efforts often prove to be mere facades, vanishing when you need them the most. This disparity arises from their self-centered focus, where the relationship is perceived as a transactional affair, centered solely on their personal gain. This skewed perspective fosters an unfair balance, leaving you perpetually in the role of the giver, while they persistently take. This imbalance can leave you feeling undervalued and overlooked, echoing Epictetus's reminder that wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Recognizing the absence of authentic support within your relationships is pivotal. It necessitates a thorough evaluation of whether there exists an equitable exchange between you and the other party. Identifying and addressing this imbalance is crucial to ensure that you invest your precious time and energy in relationships that embody true care, reciprocity and genuine support, resonating with Rumi's words. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. Number 9. The Chessboard of Competition Imagine a chessboard where every move is strategically calculated, not just to advance one's position, but also to undermine the opponent. In a similar fashion, someone with intentions to use you may view your relationship as a tactical competition. Every achievement, decision or challenge you face becomes an opportunity for them to assert their superiority. This could manifest as an attempt to overshadow your professional accomplishments, outperform your personal victories or subtly diminish your choices. Their actions are driven by an insatiable need to constantly emerge as the victor in this self-created contest. This perpetual sense of competition can manifest in various aspects of life. In a professional setting, they might strive to outshine you in meetings or appropriate your ideas as their own. In personal relationships, they may downplay your experiences or achievements, perpetually seeking to appear more significant. Even in everyday conversations, you might sense their efforts to portray themselves as smarter or more successful. This behavior often stems from deep-seated insecurity and a distorted sense of self-worth, wherein they gauge their value not by their own accomplishments, but by their ability to outperform others. This perspective transforms every interaction into a zero-sum game, where their victory translates to your loss. It replaces the potential for mutual growth with an unrelenting desire to outshine and dominate. Navigating a relationship with someone who is perpetually in competition mode can be immensely draining. It creates a stressful environment in which genuine teamwork and support are supplanted by rivalry. Your successes cease to be cause for celebration, but are instead perceived as threats to their status. Your challenges are not met with empathy, but rather regarded as opportunities for them to gain an upper hand. Recognizing this recurring pattern is of utmost importance. It empowers you to establish boundaries and, if feasible, transform the relationship into a healthier, more cooperative dynamic. Ultimately, it's about recognizing that a solid relationship is founded on mutual respect and support not ceaseless competition for supremacy. As Marcus Aurelius wisely noted, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. Number 8. Fair Weather Friends Imagine a tree that offers shade only when the sun shines gently, but vanishes when a storm looms on the horizon. In the realm of relationships, this behavior is akin to individuals who are present during the good times, reaping the benefits of the connection. However, when adversity strikes and genuine support is needed, they disappear, leaving you to confront the challenges on your own. They perceive relationships as convenient commodities, valuable only when it aligns with their interests. Their support remains superficial, 
extended solely when it serves their personal agenda. It's during pivotal moments, whether a personal crisis, professional setback, or emotional turmoil, that their absence becomes painfully conspicuous. These are the times when authentic support and empathy are most imperative, yet their lack of commitment becomes starkly evident. This abandonment can have profound emotional repercussions, fostering sentiments of betrayal and disillusionment. It erodes the trust and reliability that were presumed to underpin the relationship. Recognizing this absence during crucial junctures serves as a significant indicator. It aids in distinguishing between those genuinely invested in your well-being and those who participate in the relationship solely for personal gain. Identifying this pattern is crucial in comprehending the true essence of the relationship and the intentions of the other party. It underscores the significance of unwavering support, both during times of prosperity and adversity, as the bedrock of any meaningful connection. As Hafez beautifully conveyed, stay close to anything that makes you glad you are alive. Number 7. The Unbalanced Seesaw Imagine a seesaw where one side is burdened with efforts, sacrifices and commitments, while the other side barely registers any similar contributions. This vividly illustrates a relationship characterized by a profound lack of reciprocity. In such instances, you may find yourself consistently pouring in time, energy and emotions in an attempt to sustain the relationship. Conversely, the other person's involvement remains minimal, sometimes merely for appearances or entirely absent. This disparity manifests in various ways. You might notice that you're invariably the one initiating conversations and making plans, while their responses are dispassionate or non-committal. You could be the perpetual provider of support and understanding, yet receive minimal reciprocation when you require it. In moments of sharing personal experiences, you open up and express yourself honestly, but they remain closed off or disinterested. This one-sided effort often emanates from a self-centered perception of relationships. For the other person, the relationship serves as mere convenience, a tool to be utilized when needed, devoid of any genuine commitment to exchange or connect. Their involvement persists only as long as it aligns with their interests, while your needs and emotions are disregarded. This stands in stark contrast to the essence of healthy relationships, which are built upon mutual exchange, shared experiences, and a harmonious emotional investment. Addressing this situation necessitates a keen observance of how the relationship operates. Take a moment to assess whether both parties are equally engaged in nurturing and advancing the connection, or if the onus primarily falls on your shoulders. It's essential to honestly evaluate whether the relationship is fulfilling and balanced, or if it feels lopsided and emotionally draining, adhering to the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Number 6. The Double-Edged Sword Gossip and the betrayal of trust within relationships can be likened to a double-edged sword. On one side, when they confide in you about others, it may create a deceptive sense of closeness and trust, making it appear as though they are sharing secrets and welcoming you into an exclusive circle of trust. However, the other edge of this sword is significantly more harmful. It involves them breaching your trust by using your private or sensitive information as fodder for gossip with others. This isn't merely a matter of trust being broken. It represents a deliberate strategy aimed at eroding your sense of security and privacy within the relationship. This behavior signifies a blatant disregard for personal information and confidentiality. Individuals who engage in gossip employ it as a means of exerting control over social dynamics, often positioning themselves at the center of information networks. 
By disseminating and distorting information, they seek to manipulate how people perceive situations, forge alliances, or even stir up trouble, all for their personal gain. Such conduct within relationships views people as instruments and confidential information as commodities to be bartered. The ramifications for those who experience this betrayal are multifaceted. It fosters an atmosphere of mistrust and insecurity, undermining what could have otherwise been a supportive and dependable relationship. The misuse of personal information can inflict harm on reputations, relationships and self-esteem. Recognizing this behavioral pattern is crucial for safeguarding yourself from manipulative individuals. It's essential to observe how they speak about others in their absence and exercise caution in sharing personal details with them. Paying attention to their approach to confidentiality and their inclination to engage in gossip can provide insights into their true character and motivations. Identifying and addressing this behavior is imperative for maintaining your dignity and ensuring that your personal boundaries are respected in all your relationships. As Rumi wisely said, do not be a witness against your neighbor without a cause and do not deceive with your lips. Number five, selective availability. Imagine a relationship as a phone line, but it's a one-way connection where you're always available to listen, help and support. Your time, emotions and resources are consistently open for them. On the contrary, the other person's availability is a rare occurrence, unpredictable and always dictated by their terms. This isn't merely a result of being busy or having different priorities. It's a deliberate choice they make. Their deliberate unavailability serves two primary purposes. It maintains a convenient emotional distance for them and grants them control over the relationship dynamics. By seldom being available, they create a situation where you perpetually desire more and feel grateful for any attention they bestow upon you. Your attempts to establish a connection are often met with excuses, delays or outright neglect. Your messages go unanswered, calls unreturned, and your needs are consistently overlooked. When they do engage, it usually aligns with their schedule or serves their needs, turning the relationship into a one-way street where you become more of a convenience than a valued partner. This recurrent pattern can exact a significant emotional toll, triggering feelings of inadequacy and causing you to question your self-worth. It breeds frustration and resentment as you come to realize that your efforts and availability are not reciprocated. Recognizing the pattern of selective availability is of paramount importance. It necessitates an objective evaluation of the equilibrium between effort and availability within the relationship. It entails comprehending that healthy relationships are rooted in mutual respect, concerted effort, and shared presence, echoing the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Number four, the guilt trap. Imagine guilt as invisible strings pulled by a puppeteer, subtly directing the actions of a well-intentioned person down an unfamiliar path. In this scenario, the manipulator skillfully tugs these strings, tapping into your sense of responsibility empathy or fairness. They may frame their requests in a way that makes declining seem heartless or selfish. Alternatively, they might remind you of past favors, implying a debt you must repay. This strategy of instilling guilt is cunning and sly. It often commences with small requests or concessions and gradually escalates to more significant demands. Over time, your personal boundaries erode and your capacity to decline weakens, ensnaring you in a cycle of guilt and compliance. The manipulator's needs and desires take precedence while your own are disregarded or dismissed. The efficacy of this tactic lies in its exploitation of a fundamental human trait, 
the desire to be viewed as kind and helpful. By inducing guilt, they pervert these qualities into tools of control. You end up doing things not out of genuine willingness or mutual respect, but due to a sense of obligation. This frequently leaves you with feelings of resentment and exhaustion. Recognizing when someone employs guilt to manipulate you is essential for upholding your personal boundaries and safeguarding your emotional well-being. It necessitates an awareness of the emotional currents in your interactions, the ability to differentiate between authentic requests and manipulative ones, and the courage to scrutinize the motives behind these requests. Asserting your right to decline without succumbing to guilt is pivotal. Identifying and addressing This manipulative behavior is a cornerstone of constructing healthier relationships founded on mutual respect, authentic care, and free choice, echoing the wisdom of Seneca. He who does not prevent a crime when he can, encourages it. Number 3 the one-way conversation. Visualize a conversation as a two-way street, where thoughts, experiences, and emotions flow freely in both directions. In a healthy relationship, this exchange is vibrant and reciprocal. However, when dealing with someone who's merely using you, the conversation transforms into a one-way path. Their narratives and experiences take center stage, while any attempt to discuss your own life encounters roadblocks. This absence of genuine interest manifests in various ways. Conversations with such individuals often resemble listening to a monologue disguised as a dialogue. They immerse themselves in their lives, anticipating your full attention and empathy. Yet, when it's your turn to speak, their enthusiasm wanes. They may respond with indifference, abruptly change the subject, or overtly show disinterest in your concerns and experiences. Your issues, regardless of their significance, appear trivial to them. This behavior transcends mere social awkwardness. It serves as a clear indicator of their priorities and intentions. By dictating the conversation and disregarding your input, they make it all about themselves. It reflects a subtle form of selfishness where the relationship revolves solely around them, reducing your role to that of a passive listener or a mere echo of their thoughts. Such interactions can be profoundly disheartening, leading to sensations of insignificance and frustration. The fundamental human longing for recognition and understanding remains unmet. Over time, this lopsided dynamic can erode the very foundation of the relationship, leaving you feeling more like an appendage to their life than a genuine partner. Identifying this absence of genuine interest is pivotal. It entails recognizing how these one-sided exchanges impact your emotional well-being and assessing whether the relationship contributes to your growth or drains your vitality. Acknowledging this issue marks the initial stride towards cultivating more balanced and fulfilling relationships, where your experiences and narratives are cherished on par with theirs, echoing the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Number 2. The Illusion of Depth Imagine a relationship as the surface of a lake, glistening and appearing deep but in reality, it's shallow. In these interactions, people may play the roles of close friends or committed partners, engaging in frequent communication, laughter, and what seems like intimate conversations. However, this facade of closeness doesn't penetrate to the depths of genuine connection and commitment. This absence of true commitment manifests in various ways. You may notice that they readily enjoy the perks of the relationship, but swiftly withdraw when it demands effort or sacrifice from their side. In times of need, their support often proves feeble or entirely absent. They readily partake in joyous moments, but conspicuously vanish during challenging times. Moreover, this semblance of closeness lacks the fundamental trust and reliability 
essential for authentic relationships. Plans are made and easily discarded. Promises are made but seldom fulfilled. Their involvement typically stems from convenience and self-interest. The underlying motive behind this behavior often revolves around maintaining a network of contacts for their own use, without the emotional investment that genuine relationships necessitate. It's akin to keeping people at arm's length, near enough to be of service but not close enough to demand authentic commitment. This approach allows them to relish the advantages of closeness while sidestepping the risks associated with deep emotional attachment and responsibility. Spotting the illusion of depth is vital for comprehending the dynamics within a relationship. It involves keenly observing how interactions unfold and critically evaluating whether the apparent intimacy is substantiated by authentic commitment and shared vulnerability. It's about discerning whether the relationship maintains a balanced emotional investment or leans disproportionately toward fulfilling their needs. Recognizing this pattern serves as a compass for seeking and nurturing relationships founded on sincerity, mutual generosity, and genuine emotional depth, echoing the wisdom of Seneca. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Number 1. Enduring Disrespect Consistent disrespect in a relationship goes beyond occasional slip-ups or thoughtless remarks. It's an ongoing pattern, much like a thread woven into the very fabric of the relationship. This disrespect can take various forms, ranging from demeaning comments and dismissive attitudes to outright disregard for your feelings and boundaries. It might manifest as subtle but frequent insults or as a direct assault on your dignity. Imagine a garden where respect serves as the essential nutrient for growth. In its absence, you're left with a barren landscape where nothing positive can flourish. In such an environment, every attempt at conversation or connection is tainted with contempt and indifference. The person displaying this lack of respect, whether consciously or unconsciously, may use it as a means to dominate or control the relationship. This disrupts the equilibrium, erasing the sense of equality and mutual regard that should be its foundation. This continuous disrespect erodes the very core of the relationship. When disagreements arise, they are transformed into emotionally damaging conflicts instead of opportunities for understanding and resolution. This disrupts the natural give and take of a healthy relationship, making it challenging, if not impossible, to establish mutual respect and normal interactions. Recognizing this recurring pattern is of utmost importance. It requires looking beyond isolated incidents and understanding the broader behavioral trend. Respect isn't solely demonstrated through grand gestures. It's also expressed in everyday interactions, acknowledgements, and the handling of conflicts. Persistent disrespect in a relationship signifies viewing the other person not as an equal partner but as a means to an end. This disregard for your emotions and dignity signals an inherently imbalanced and unhealthy relationship. Identifying this characteristic is essential for those who value their self-respect and aspire to cultivate relationships founded on mutual respect and equality. To quote Marcus Aurelius, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. In conclusion, understanding these patterns of unhealthy relationships is a crucial step toward building a life filled with meaningful connections and mutual respect. As we reflect on the wisdom of Stoic philosophers like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus, we are reminded of the importance of self-respect and the value of surrounding ourselves with those who truly uplift us. To dive deeper into the timeless wisdom of Stoic life lessons and habits, we invite you to explore the playlist on your screen. These teachings can serve as a guiding light on your journey to a more fulfilling and harmonious life. Thank you for watching, and remember 
that by recognizing these patterns and choosing healthier connections, you can pave the way to a brighter future.